it, it, we're trying to protect ourselves, which is important. That's very good that we're trying to protect. Anger is a good feeling. It's anger not is a good feeling. I agree. Yeah, right. Suppress or bypass like all there's this wisdom there. Bypassing. Oh my god. Yeah. The bypassing, like love and light. No. Especially in the spiritual community. Oh my god. You know? <laughs> Don't, Don't get, get me started. started. <laughs> if I hear somebody say, oh, love and light, like I, when you're suffering and you're like talking, you're like, no, how about love, right. light, shadow, shadow, right. shadow, oh. shadow work. Hey everybody, I'm Dougal Fraser. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, on Spiritual Explorer, we love to talk about metaphysical modalities, self-help techniques that can help change your life. And my real passion is talking to other spiritual teachers about what's been working for them and the energy that's on the planet. Now today, I am delighted to welcome a dear friend of mine. I cannot believe, even when I was reading her bio, how prolific she is as a spiritual teacher. She is the author of five books, including The Map, which was an international bestseller. She has 14 oracle decks. 14 oracle decks. She is a TV host. She's been on The Doctor. She's been on Dr. Phil with me, if I must say. But most importantly, she is my dear friend. Let's jump right into it. Please welcome Colette Baron reed Hey, Hi, and I we really are. You. I miss you, and we generally are friends. We do you remember how we met? It's not a, how did we meet? So you called me one day, completely yes. out of the blue. I, I remember getting the message, and I flipped out. And you were like, "Hey, my name is Colette. I found your book in the bookstore. I don't That's know. I thought right. maybe we could do a TV show." And you were like, "But I think we should be friends." And I was <laughs> like, "Oh idea. my god." <laughs> <laughs> we, that's right i did that was yeah. your first book the hardcover book right, that, right and right. i read it cover to cover and went i need to know him <laughs> that's right and i looked you up and i was like that's right i left you that crazy message <laughs> and you know what's funny about that is that at that time in my life i mean i was i don't know like 27 or something like that my pa i wasn't with hay house at the time and i didn't really know any other spiritual teachers i looked up to everybody and i sort of felt like i was like left out like sitting alone at my own table in the lunchroom and you were so kind you were like you have to meet john holland let's go to omega like and and this beautiful friendship developed and i have to say like it's been such a pleasure just knowing you and i'm so i, I i'm so like my mind is boggled by what you create you're an incredible teacher how 14 decks colette do you ever like ingest that for yourself well gosh so I, I I'm I'm obsessed with creating decks. I'm, well, is it an obsession? I don't know. It's my it's my passion. Mm -hmm. So I started with my first published deck in 2006. I came to Hay House in 2005. So I've been doing it a long time. Um, and uh, I it has been my passion since I was a teenager. So um, and my background, my my expertise really is in the classical systems like the I Ching or the Tarot, which I use professionally for 25 years, um, and runes and the, you know, you name it, I've done it. But um, I am an innovator too. So I was always looking at how, how can I create something different from mm. these lexicons, these, these, these systems that divination systems. Um, so I, I'm, I guess I am prolific. I have three more decks I'm working on right now. Not at the same time. Well, kind of, yeah, I am. <laughs> but, <laughs> that thought alone makes me sweat. I can't fathom yeah. doing that all at the same time. But it's, you know, I, I, I've narrowed it down. My, my, I don't write books anymore. So uh, I've narrowed down my entire focus of my work to teach people how to use divination tools as personal development and personal transformation tools yes. rather than predictive a fortune telling tools, right? Yeah. It, which they, they can do too. But uh, so, so really I've realized that this, this, sorry, my dog will start barking if I don't coddle her. <laughs> this is Bizu, everyone. Hey, Bizu. <laughs> yes, I love you. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, so it's, it's really about teaching people how to use them in a way in which they can get to know themselves better, reflect on where they are and to also tune into what they can't see. 
Mm. Uh, so that's the, the whole purpose of me creating these decks. And they're really more thematic. They're different. They have their own spirit. They have their own personalities, et cetera. And I kind of give birth to them. They're like my babies. Um, but, and, but they're really, they're ways to help guide you to become more authentic, to, to understand yourself and your relationship to the conscious universe, because people forget the magic when they're all in, when they're all in fear. This is what I love about your work. There's a depth to your work that goes beyond divination. Like I know we use that term to describe Oracle decks and ways that you can sort of connect with your intuition. But one of the things that I love about teaching with you and then learning from you is the depth of what you do. I mean, you are a spiritual psychologist in my mind. You know, your yeah. ability to sort of empower people to be their best self is remarkable. Well, my background is Jungian psychology. I did, I did study. I actually, it was funny because I, when I got to Hay House, I went, I haven't finished my degree. And they're like, <laughs> because it's, it has been, I'm curious to understand why we make the decisions, you know, why we choose our behaviors, why the subconscious creates conditioning, like all of these ways in which we create the world. I think you can't not be interested in psychology. It's the, 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 and the disconnect between our spiritual self and our, and our egoic mind, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's curious. I think if we can learn different techniques to build a bridge between those two, even though they're there all the time, they're, we're not ever disconnected from them. We just don't listen. Mm -hmm. um, it's more than just, Oh, your intuition. It's more about the evolution of your, purpose, right? It's the evolution, like, who are you meant to be here right now, contributing to the world as it is right now? So um, this brings just, me to my sort of favorite, you just said something, the world as it is right now. Yeah. And so here we are sort of talking about psychology. And I, I'm curious, I mean, I know we talk all the time on the phone, but I do think there's something interesting about since 2020, there's like this trigger of trauma for people yeah. all over the globe. And sure, it was the pandemic that maybe started it, but it unleashed things that I think have been there for a very long time for a lot of us and just for the planet in general. And I'm curious, what's your feeling right now? With I know we both identify as empaths. We're both oh, super yeah. sensitive people, but everything has changed. And watching people manage that is sometimes curious, <laughs> the choices they make. Sometimes curious. So... Gosh, uh, summarizing this. So, of course, you're right. The spotlight was on the inequities in the world. Um, everything got spotlighted. Everything that could possibly be wrong with the way our societies are built have been under a microscope or under a magnifying glass. And um, it's destabilized a lot of us, right? It's destabilized um Everyone, really. And it doesn't matter. You, I, it's not just the United States. I know you live in the States. I live in Canada. But, you know, I talked to some of the people over in Europe that I've worked with, and they're saying it's the same there. So it's all over the world. There is a reckoning. Yeah. And, and, and when I say destabilizing, uh, when you are brought into an epiphanous state, right, the epiphany is, oh, my God, this is, we've been in my front of me the whole time and I didn't notice or whatever. And then how do I change it? but there is no quick fix. Okay. That's mm. enough. Easy. There's no quick <laughs> fix. So, um, but at the same time, what I think has happened, there's some good things that have happened. We understand we need to make reparations. We know, we know that there's a lot to change. It is not happening overnight. Not everybody's on board with it. So there's mm. a lot of polarization, but what I think has been really interesting when you talked about trauma is that because the trauma lives in the body. So you have a collective trauma, which is, which are entire, like there are certain races that have experienced trauma that we haven't necessarily, right? Like my mom was a Holocaust survivor, but she was white. I yeah. have no clue what it's like to be a, a person of color who has experienced marginalization, right? You right. know, it's like, so there's so many layers to this that um, it's, it's a lot. Mm. So in the body, what happens is, is if you feel threatened now, now that that's one thing that was, that's a very important layer, but the pandemic kind of pinned us in place like a butterfly, right? Yeah. Like a pin and you couldn't go anywhere. Right. And, and fear has been something that the pandemic of fear itself, mm. um, I think has been worse because mental health has been at its most extreme 
uh, I think, the mental health difficulties, if you will, yeah. challenges. Yeah. Um, and so in the body are these narratives and stories that relate to safety, relate to the conditioned responses, to the way we perceive what's going on. So when we're all been thrown into a consistent, a consistent river of fight, flight, freeze, um, attach, submit, mm. all of those ways in which we have trauma responses, depending on what that is. Mm. And then we react, we can't help it, but we're not coming necessarily from a place of thought, right. of clarity, and there's a big disconnect. So I'm going to say just in general, the sense of fear that everybody's had, yeah. uh, fear of the loss of normalcy, right. fear of your of the fact that certainly for people who care about other people, they realize, oh, my God, if I've been hurting these people like, you know, there's all of these reckonings that have that, that have happening. And then other people are going, yeah, like we've been here the whole time. Like <laughs> we've been waiting for this. We've day. been waiting for you. And it's, you're too late. And like, it's right, right. whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's not even about those things. And I don't want to make too much too. I don't want to be too comedic about it because mm. I think it's super, super important. Mm. Um, but for the stress response is has been rehearsed. Mm. So we are rehearsing fear mm. and, and uncertainty. And it's funny because I had a book that I wrote two, two many years ago. And we were everybody at the publisher saying, oh, that book came out too early, which is called Uncharted, which is how to manage uncertainty. Yeah. Right? And, and what happens when we're in that fight, flight, freeze, you know, submit, attach way of being, um, all very unhealthy ways of being. And, and yet they're healthy ways as well. Like we, we, that it, it, we're trying to protect ourselves, which is important. That's very good that we're trying to protect. Anger is a good feeling. It's anger is a good feeling. I agree. Yeah, right. Suppress or bypass, like all there's this wisdom there. Bypassing. Oh my god. Yeah. The bypassing, like love and light. No. Especially in the spiritual community. Oh my god. You know? <laughs> Don't, Don't get me started. started. <laughs> if I hear somebody say, "Oh, love and light," like I, when you're suffering and you're like talking, you're like. No, how about love, right. light, shadow, shadow, right. shadow, uh, shadow work. <laughs> I literally just said to my therapist on Monday morning, I was like, I just want to be surrounded by people that embrace their shadow. That's what I need. I need people who are honest about their shadow. Wow. I, I'm, I'm not the best guest. I apologize because now I have, okay. I have three dogs, all of which want to come here. So shadow work, I think, is crucial. But to do it with the right people, I think that's the other thing. You like Because trauma is old. There's the collective trauma. I know Thomas Hubel and Gabor Mate are the two best, I feel, just, just again, me, mm. um, the best kind of teachers right now, because that's, they specialize in this. They talk about this. How do we heal collective trauma? Mm. Um, I, do, I've done EMDR therapy, which has, because I have lit trauma. I mean, I have ancestral trauma, you know, you, you understand this as well too. So there's, there's all kinds of stuff that we carry around with us. And uh, it's when it gets triggered, it's like a switch goes on mm. and your subconscious doesn't know it's that you're not back four years old. Right. You're with a raging, a raging situation. Right. So yeah, you're, you're you, you don't even know you're four. Right. Right. You have no clue. Yeah. So this is the trauma response. And it's particularly difficult for empaths if we could segue into that because mm. both of us share this and I call you, I've gained weight. I mean, I'm like, oh, you know, like. <laughs> I it's have, a grounding yeah. technique. G gaining weight for empaths, I say this all the time. It's the lazy form of grounding, but it does it work. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it does work. I, I've actually got a really amazing grounding meditation for everybody. We're going to gift you guys. But, so fun. you know, it is so true. And, and, uh, and it's sometimes, I mean, my body will just, without even adding any extra food. And I realize, okay, I'm tuning into something that's not only my own. Mm. And so when you have a collective story or the conditioned story that everybody's like, we're all in the same soup, mm. but not all of us respond the same way, right? Like my husband is grounded, does not respond. He doesn't know why am I crying? Like, you know, it's like, he doesn't have the fear things. I like this. He's not Im impacted the same way. But many of us are yeah. feeling the world as if it was our own, yeah. right? So we don't even know whose trauma we're tuned into. But our own reaction to that is, is what can actually make us ill, mm. right? And so don't you think, don't you think I've noticed that lightworkers seem to be being called to being of service 
or empaths are being to be, I mean, I think I read today in the United States for some therapists in major cities, it's like a six month waiting list. Like they cannot fulfill the need. So healers out there who are, who are feeling that collective trauma, you know, welling up with tears in the grocery store for reasons they do not know Hello. why. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I can't get through a grocery store without crying. And I just look at everybody. I'm like, you just bear with me. Yeah, bear um, with me while I'm walking by the oats. <laughs> but don't you think part of that is lightworkers are sort of being called to service? And I, not necessarily in just the traditional sense. We think of healers. and But, you know, you can be a lightworker as an accountant and a mortgage broker and, you know, working in a grocery store. It's like being kind to each other, being empathetic, holding space. It's so I necessary that right that. now. Can I say how much I love that you said that? Well, of because course. Because being a light worker does not mean that you have to be a, an intuitive, a therapist, an actual healer or anything like mm. that. It's caring about people. Being a light worker is a call for you to care yeah. and to listen and, and to and to hold space. Yeah. And, and that is, and, and it's hard when you're feeling triggered to hold space for somebody else who's in front of you, who's suffering, mm. you know, and the, and how they, how they manage the way they express their suffering. Some people do it through anger, through rage, through, you know, like we're a ball of, I don't know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and so I think it's, I really love that you did, you said that because there is such a key piece right now of, of, of the light workers that are everyday people mm -hmm. that are teachers at like, and, and like people at the checkout counter, There's, there was a girl today, I'm going to tell you this total light worker. I was, um, I was late to make lunch. So I went into this bar burrito place, mm. um, and, uh, you know, asking where's the gluten-free things, blah, blah, blah. Like I, cause I, yeah, I do. And, but she was so kind and so friendly and I was anxious cause I was going to be late for something. And yeah. And then I was like, Oh, and I, and, and her kindness stopped me in my tracks and I paid attention to the exchange of energy and I calmed right down. Yeah. And I was like, that's what this is. Eye contact. How are you really? Right. How long have you worked at the company? Well, right. I was having this mundane conversation, but that it was an exchange between people who were who were kind and respectful to the other. Yeah, and grounding. You know, yeah. I think a lot of light workers or empaths, we feel the energy invitations. So when we're inundated with pain in the world and suffering, even if it's, you know, 7,000 miles away, the first thing is the ego mind will say, well, how can I help that? I can't fix that, but you can. When we take those simple actions of just being in a store and like connecting with someone and heart to heart and eye to eye and just being there, I genuinely believe that is what the planet needs right now. And it may feel simple and the ego will think, oh, this isn't going to make any difference, but it really does make <laughs> a right. difference. Because we think of how much big stuff that needs to be fixed. And it's right. like some days it's like, oh, I just want to go in my bed and put my covers over my head. And you just have to chip away at it. Like the really big things, anything that ends in ism mm. is on the table right now. Exactly. <laughs> so let's just say that. We don't yeah. have to say the first part. Anything right. that ends in that is our yeah. responsibility. Yeah. I don't, I, you know what I mean? We inherited a house mm. and, and it's got a leaky roof yeah. and it's got on shitty foundations and yeah. the windows need replacing. And we inherited that house and, and we can't stand in that house saying, I didn't make the roof leak and the thing thing. No, right. it's our job to fix it. But it yeah. might take a long time. Mm. And it's expensive. It's mm. going to cost us. And you say we, be... like it's our house. It's our it house. Yeah. Exactly. It's our yeah. house. And so, and it, when I say that it's expensive, I mean, not necessarily, well, maybe it could be money, but it's not even about that. It's about, it's about your consciousness mm. that you are spending your attention, mm. right? You're spending your attention on what needs you, but it, you can't do that 24 seven. Right. right. So, so you, but you can do tiny things, mm. right? That's the other thing. Micro changes, micro moments where you're really aware. And I always, I always find that one of, one of the things that I teach is something I didn't, I didn't make up. It's, I learned it in a 12 step program that I've been for 36 years, which 36 is 36 years, it's incredible 36 collect. years clean and sober. Wow. Soon. Like, well, one day at a time, I'm not there yet. How's that? Right. So like, um, like 
11 months, Fair. one more month to go. And I'll be, uh, I'll be 36 years clean and sober. So I learned that in the, in, in the 12 step program that staying in a 24 hour compartment, anyone can live in one day. Mm. And I have lived my life like that. So I just see what arises in that day. And I'm really not as concerned about the future or what happened in the past. Cause I can always, I can always help that, but it's only when we get terrified of our uncertainties of the future. Cause guess what? Didn't you hear it? What is it? Two years ago? Oh, it's going to be over in a couple months. It'll be. Oh, over. of course. Every the psychics kept saying this was no big deal. You know, just oh, you know, we'll get clear, back to normal. Clear your chakras. You've got a bubble around you. And I was like, oh, no, about that <laughs> this, this is another thing i love about you is we're both like science nerds at the same oh, time so yes. we love metaphysics but we're also like but <laughs> i am like with dougal i'm a i'm a research nut i quantum physics is porn porn for me <laughs> like your, is that i your love <laughs> the science of metaphysics i want to know um one of my favorite books lately and you have to have this guy on your podcast is ooh, ooh. how woo woo works it's Dr. Who's David Hamilton. Oh, He's cool. Dr. David. You have to have him on there. He's okay. a scientist and he, his book is called Why Woo Woo Works. Mm, wow. Right. So and it's all about his research into what's considered fringe and and how it actually works scientifically. It's so cool. But well, that's yeah. that's sort of interesting because I do think I know we've talked about trauma. and We've talked about heavy topics, but looking to the future, I do think there is going to be sort of a renaissance spiritually, creatively. <gasps> you betcha. Right. And so there, there is going to be beauty that comes from this. And you've sort of had your own creative expansion that's happened. This sort of artistic side of yourself has really emerged. Can you share that with us a little bit? Yeah. So I, well, you know, I'm a musician. So, so my, my first, my first love was uh, as a singer songwriter and I was on EMI music which is now universal music and I had a couple of albums. And You're then the only person this. I know who has lived 16 lifetimes in one and, lifetime. Yeah, and I did. I <laughs> mean, true. I did the whole, yeah, I had two albums. I know it's amazing. I actually got everything. Okay. Then that, no. So I started re writing and recording music again with my partner, Eric, who you'd know from Tori Amos. He's mm. very, he was very famous and he's actually quite well known now, but he moved to Sweden and he's doing music for TV and film. And we got back together again and said, you know, let's just, make a band name. So our, our band is called Social Magic and we are on Spotify. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Yeah. So we have two songs that we recorded on there. And so we decided to go back to music and whatever. But what happened was in the summer, um, he had a big TV project, so he couldn't write music with me. And we had to postpone it till the end of this year. I had to do something with my creativity. So I took a class. Mm -hmm. I took this one class and on um, and I started painting and it the first painting took five weeks and then all of a sudden I started like having these dreams about these beings that mm. wanted me to paint them mm. and I'm like okay because <laughs> it, it felt very meditative and I got into the zone and I, I just kind of and it felt the same way as when I create oracle cards so it was that same feeling like when I write music it's the same I don't know how to put it mm. but it's the same zone and to be honest with you um, I don't spend a lot of time on social media uh, because I find it energetically very uh, draining. And also, did you see my collective sigh? I totally get that. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to, my team will tell me, hey, you know, these people posted this, like, uh, you should answer them, right? Me so too. I'm like, okay, yeah. and I'll do that, right? right? So, but I won't scroll. I have no idea. I will call, a fr I'll call you. You know me, you and right. I call each other. We've gone I old school. I'm old school, pick up the phone. I can't, I cannot scroll. I can't doom scroll. I don't mm. want to hear all the fighting. Mm. I, I want us to meet in the middle of the bridge. Where, what happened to the debating club? I was on the right. debating club in school. <laughs> Why can't we come from two different points of view and talk yeah. about it? But anyway, right. and, and, uh, and it's a time sucker. So I started painting and painting for me became very meditative. And then what happened was, is I showed the head of the art department at, at my publisher at Hay House. And she was like, have you thought about doing these? And then I sent it to two more people at the publisher and the other one. He was like, you need to do this as your own deck. So I'm creating the art for my own deck now. They're so, so incredible. Colette. They're so beautiful. Do you think you're channeling when you're in the painting yes. mode? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I have this like, I have this like love and hate relationship with the word, forgive me, it was a spiritual teacher. No, me too. The channeling thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Because I consider my, you know, and I used to shake my head and burp and talk in different names and all this stuff you way did? back in the day. Yeah, way back in the day. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. 
<laughs> but I, but I do oh, say to David, I've like, never done that. <laughs> I do say to David, there are moments when I'm writing or when I'm speaking, and, you're, and it and just you're gone. yeah. I mean, I'm watching, um, but it, it is sort of interesting. And when you talk about this, and when you've shared the images with me, I keep saying like these are light beings, right? Like something so like they, beautiful there's something about. very alive. But the other thing, which is interesting too, which is I, I do believe it's channeling, mm. um, and I'm also not like channeling an entity like Seth. I think mm. that's where people think the word channeling means. But right. I channel all my oracle decks. Right. They speak to me, and I listen, right. and I'm more in a li deep listening, and then I'm writing from the listening place. I'm painting from the listening place, mm. but that's what the class was. Mm. Let whatever is meant to come on the canvas show them to themselves to you. Mm. Like, so there's a meditation and you call the canvas out and I'm like, what the F is happening there? Mm. Like, this is interesting because I didn't even know I could paint like that. Like, that's I didn't even know. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but the point is, is that there is a connection to source. Mm. Creativity has always been a connection to source for me, as long as I move myself out of the way. And art, I mean, it's interesting because the arts, arts, music, et cetera, are an expression of the times. The way that we move through what's ever going on, we can yeah. do through the medium of art um, and music and writing, et cetera. It's a universal so, language. You know, even if countries are opposed, we celebrate each other's art. You know, we celebrate each other's culture. We celebrate food. It's one of the universal languages. So I have a question for you. As I'm sitting here talking to you, even though, you know, I've known you for over 10 years and I know all of these things, what's coming to mind is this sort of amazing ability you have to give yourself permission to transform. You were a recording artist. You're an author. You make Oracle decks. You're a painter now. You used to have a Harley. You're a medium, a oh, television yeah. host. <laughs> so all of these incarnations, and I find a lot of times with students and with clients, they have this fear that if they commit to something, that's it, right? It's written in stone. It's a done deal. You can't evolve. How do people give themselves permission to be multifaceted, to evolve and change? Where does that come from, do you think? You're one of the best interviewers. Did I, did I... <laughs> <laughs> this podcast of yours or this this show of yours is so fabulous. I love, I just wanted to throw that in there and they, they might edit that out, but you're amazing. Um, no, you're great. Uh, well, first of all, it's in my astrology chart that I would never stay in the same thing, right? Mm. It just is there. I have a Uranus and Aquarius, innovative, whatever. So I can't, I can't stay the same. But I, I feel that if you're drawn to something, you need to explore it. So mm -hmm. I believe in the superpower of curiosity. And I also believe that, and it's also very difficult because once you've set a certain way, you have people around you expecting you to stay like that. So there's mm -hmm. a level of, of fear of consequence if you do something different. But, you know, being in the, in the AA, coming from, and again, I just broke my hand and anybody will take that part out, but who cares? Um, but anyway, like going through the drugs and alcohol phase, almost dying, getting a second chance at life, knowing that the only way that I could become a person that I meant to be is to change, is to continue to pull the onion skin off and evolve. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just kind of following, being curious as to what's in front of me. Like I didn't do well doing the music. I was old when I got my, oh, I'm 63 right now, but I was 40 when I got my record deal and all they could talk about was how old I was. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. And I sound really young, even now. Like that's what's really cute why we have my, I don't have my name on the music. It's like, they know, I sound super young and like whatever. But yeah, it was the sexism and the, ugh was and that I was I always had to be skinny I couldn't eat and it was like hard and and I wasn't cut out for it it was at that point too in my in I had already gotten really well known as a as an intuitive you know and um and I was like, ah, this isn't working for me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't going to work. So it was just I, all the every, everything was stacked against me. Um but I followed the callings and and I'm very when something calls me, I'm like a tractor beam. Like mm. I feel like, whoa, something is here. I need to explore it. But I never worry about the end game. I never did these paintings to do an Oracle deck. I'll be honest. So with total that. detachment. The point. And even still now, I could I could just say I'm done. I don't want to do all this many. I, I don't know. Like right. I don't know. Um, and I because I don't want to put pressure pressure. I just want to see what comes right. Mm. Um, but. I think the reinvention of self peace, you have to be brave to do that, but mm. you also have to be 
honest with yourself. Like if you're pigeonholing yourself and that's the problem too. Like, um, you know, when you have a lot of skill in a lot of different areas, people don't want you to have that many. Mm -hmm. They like, there's so many really interesting, uh, um, uh, actors that are incredible painters, mm. you know, like, uh, or, or they have their singers musicians. sometimes out of nowhere. It's like they have this musical talent that crosses over. Right? Yeah. And you're yeah. like, the people don't No, 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 you're that. Right. So I think that's why the students, I have the same thing. Students, my followers are, you know, like people that I work with that I mentored, you know, have to give themselves permission. And when you say, how do you give yourself permission is you have to be courageous. Mm. And I love that you said our superpower is curiosity. It I've is. never thought of it that way. And I think we sort of, you know, get cast in these roles of the movie of our life and feel like that's our role. But then everything stopped for a minute. And we had this opportunity to reassess and, and really think about what we wanted to do. And you're such an amazing example as a friend and to literally thousands of people of, so change. If you're curious, give it a shot. See what happens. Go for it. Just be in your light. Be in what you're curious about. It's, it's really remarkable, Colette. Yeah. Be in what you're curious about and don't worry about the form. Yeah. I, that That's a really big piece. And that's a huge piece of what I teach people too. It's like a huge piece of my vision board work, all this stuff. I talk about releasing the form yeah. because I was so attached to the form when I was younger. I didn't see the beauty that was in front of me because all I could see what wasn't happening with the stuff that I thought was going to provide me with an experience that was going to be a certain way. Mm. Right. And, and instead I got everything I needed and wanted from some other, from another form. Mm. So unexpectedly being, yeah unexpectedly yeah. oh my god i book deal my husband was the writer not me right yeah it was like i wasn't a writer like i was a I was a person you know and they were like hey house came call i'm like what it's so funny. I, I literally was doing dishes this morning and i was just realizing i used to always say that i don't write really well and it's hard for me and it takes a long time my entire day is filled with writing like right? i just stop saying that <laughs> You're a good writer too. You're really, you. you're just a really great at what you do. You're just, I think you're one of the kindest people. Whenever I tell people about you, um, I always say there is not a bad bone in this guy's body, except that he'll only let me look at one thing in a store. <laughs> right. We're not I'm only allowed partners. to go in one store. Right. When I'm you and David should buy husband. You, you shop with David. That's where I always say, you guys go shop. I'll do my own thing. <laughs> Colette, thank you so much for being here. I just, you mean so much to me. I, I love watching what you do. You're a huge light in the world. How can people reach you? Um, Oracle School, the books, everything. How can people get reach you? Yeah, they can just, oh, well, first let me offer you a gift for everybody. Please, so, be great. because I have had to learn how to ground myself and it works. And I have, and I will I'll be honestly, I'm honest when I tell you this meditation is so amazing. It's so if you go to colettebaronreed.com forward slash grounding, mm. um, that's we'll put a free it in the gift. comments too. Yeah, you can put it, that's a free gift for you guys. So, and colettebaronreed.com, just check out what I have. I mean, we give a lot of free stuff away. So, if you sign up to my newsletter, you'll, you know, you'll get a chance to see all the different things that I offer. But again, we give you a lot of free stuff. I have a membership site called the Oracle Circle. Um, ev but everything that I do is geared to um, showing you uh, the way for you to navigate your life so that you can re you remember that you are always intrinsically connected to the universe and that you are a powerful co-creator. You really are. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah. And check okay. out your YouTube page. You've got a great oh, YouTube channel, I'm, too. With that's incredible right. And you're going gonna, gonna to be on my podcast. <gasps> you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just Thanks keep texting so that video back to you. <laughs> Colette, I adore you. Hug me. I adore you Virtual too. Tinkerbell adores you too. <laughs> Thank you so much Bye, for being everybody. here. Thank everybody, you. check out Colette Baron reeds work. She is absolutely incredible. I adore her. And remember, let's all become curious. If you're curious about something, now is the time to make the change. The universe will support you. Thanks for being here. If you've enjoyed this interview, don't forget to click like and subscribe because it helps me a lot. Sending you all much love and I'll see you soon.